Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And I want to thank I want to thank Michael. He's been fantastic right from the beginning. And I want to just say very special. Hello, Nevada. We are going to we're going to do some great things. We've had some incredible wins here and uh, we're going to take it all the way. And we win this state. We win it all. You know that. right? So. And I apologize for those lights. The only place I don't have a light up here, so that means we're going to have to wig it tonight, okay? There's no light. They give us plenty of lights, but not to read this crap. Look, they write a beautiful... They wrote me a beautiful speech. I might as well throw it right out the window. But I just want to thank uh, all of you. It's been a special place for me. And we had great, great... We had great business success here. We've had great business success, great... Uh, relationships, Phil Ruffin and some people that we deal with. He's a fantastic guy. Great poker player, too, by the way, but he's a, he's a fantastic man. And uh, we've had a good time. And I want to just thank all of the uh, supporters in the room, because this is all about supporters. We want to get out. We want to caucus. And, you know, our uh, competitors aren't doing too well in the polls. You probably read. But I know, I know he did. He just left. He just left. Mike Pence just left. Did you hear that? Yeah. And, and uh, we have others that are leaving. We just had uh, two great endorsements, as you know. Two great endorsements. Mr. Johnson and Mr. Elder, Larry Elder. They're fantastic guys. And they just left the race and they said, we endorse Trump. We're not going to... That's better. That's better. They said, uh, we're not going to beat him, so we might as well endorse him. And they're good people, too. I want to recognize, uh, you know, Michael. And Michael's been here a long time doing a fantastic job. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. He just spoke, and uh, we want to thank him very much. He works a, He does a fantastic job. RNC National Committee Woman, Sergal Chata. Where is she? Where is she? She's around here someplace. Where are you? Raise that beautiful hand. Thank you. Thank you, darling. I appreciate it. What a job you do, too. Thank you very much. Clark County GOP Chair, Jesse Law. Jesse Law. Jesse, wherever you may be. Thank you, Jesse. There's a lot of people in this room. There's a lot of people. An assemblyman, terrific person, Ken Gray. Ken. Thank you, Ken. Great. Thank you very much. And a really great star, a great uh, person. I know what it is to be in television. He's been 21 years in a very successful show, as you know, Pawn Stars, Rick Harrison. So, Rick, thank you very much. Where is Rick? Where is Rick? Thank you, Rick. What a great job. And he's, he comes to a lot of rallies. He's like, he's us. He's us. He's MAGA all the way. He's MAGA. You got a lot of MAGA. A man who has been uh, incredible. He loves Israel. He loves our country. He's uh, one of the most popular hosts uh, there are. He's got radio. He's got television. He's got everything. He's also got a beautiful wife. And they're both here today. Wayne Allen Root. Where is Wayne? Where is Wayne? Wayne, where are you? What a wonderful guy, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. And he's uh, always been on our side. Well, he likes us because we like Israel and we like a lot of the things that are happening uh, before we left, <laughs> after we left, uh, our country's going to hell. It's going to hell. It's going to hell in a handbasket, as they would say. And the owner of Stoney's, thank you. Uh, the owner, uh, we just met him. Chris Loden. Thank you, Chris. And we have a very, very special man, the North Carolina GOP chair. He's a very powerful guy in the world of politics. Michael Watley, and Michael is going to make sure that the vote is counted accurately all over the country. North Carolina, we're doing fine all over the country, right? And he's the guy we're charging with that little task. It's not an easy task because they cheat like hell, you know? It's all they're good at. They're no good at borders. They're no good at anything. They want your taxes to go up, your interest rates to go up. They don't want you to buy houses, but they are good at cheating in elections. So we're here today for a very important reason to commit to caucus. You know what that is, right? 
That means commit to caucus. It means you have to uh, get your friends and get everybody out there and get people to do what they have to do. And this is a special group that we're inviting. And I have to say, outside, we have probably twice this number. Would anybody like to give up their, their spot? Raise your hand. No? No. All right. That's, I don't blame you. But think of it. Just over three months from now, we are starting the Iowa caucus is uh, going to be in less than three months. You come, we come here uh, after three weeks after that. So we're less than three months it begins. Think of that. But it really begins for me right now. And it really began for me about a year ago, right? Because they say, we're not going to let them rig this election like they did last time. We're not going to let them do it. We're not going to let them. We, you know, we create, we set an all-time record in history for a sitting president. I said, oh, good. How much did we win by? Oh, sir, uh, he just... Just uh, inch you out. What a crooked. Our country's crooked in so many ways. Whether it's an open border, whether it's elections, it's crooked in so many ways. We're going to straighten it out. But we need every patriot that you know to make sure that you get out, grab them, and put them in the car that day. That's going to be a very special day. And uh, in, in the general, if we win, we're, we're doing very well. We're up like 50 or 60 points in the primary. We got... We got Bert Brain, we got Ron DeSanctimonious, we got a lot of, we got some, we got some beauties. We got some beauties, I'll tell you, but uh, we're up by 52, 53 points, I heard. But I hear there's a poll coming out tomorrow that lifts us up almost to say, that's just here. And all over the country, we're up about close to 60 points, so we're doing good. We will not, for the NFL or football fans, we will not play prevent defense. Do you agree? You ever see prevent? They hold the team scoreless for the entire game. Now they have to do it just one more series. And they go prevent. And that's the end of that game. It prevents you from winning. We won't do that. We won't play prevent. But together we're going to win Nevada in a historic landslide. And we're going to push crooked Joe Biden, the most incompetent president we've ever had. And the most corrupt president. We've never had a corrupt president like this. This guy is corrupt and incompetent and doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to get us into World War III. Think of what's happened. We left three years ago. Everything was great. We we're energy independent. We, were, we had the greatest economy ever twice. We did it twice. We took care of COVID. We never got the proper credit for that, but we did a phenomenal job. The stock market was higher when we handed it over, the think of it was higher than just previous to COVID. It was higher, but we created the greatest economy in history. The greatest. It's never been like that. We were energy independent. We were going to be energy dominant. We were going to start paying off the 32 trillion. Now it's 36 trillion. But we we're going to start paying off debt and we we're going to lower your taxes further. You know, we got you the biggest tax cut ever. And all of these things, we're going to drill, baby, drill. Remember that? Drill, baby, drill. And uh, then we had that uh, terrible, terrible tragedy happen on election night. But it wasn't really election night. You know, you don't have election night anymore. You have election period. Because some of these stupid things go 48, 49 days. What do they do during those 49? They cheat. But, uh, you know, it used to be you had election day. In France, they went back to it. We should go... One day voting, we should go paper ballots and voter ID. It's very simple. Very simple. In France, I recently had an election, 37 million votes. It was same day. It was paper ballots and voter ID. Everything was done. At the end of the day, 1030 in the evening, they called the winner. They called the loser. Everybody went home. They were all satisfied. They weren't. Uh, see, had you ever see these elections with the machines? We think we'll have the result. Here's election night. We think we'll know what Pennsylvania is in about uh, seven days. What, seven days? They used to do it in one day with paper ballots, right? Now they said, we think in seven, eight days we should come up. So you don't even know who won the election. This is the craziest thing. These elections are so rigged, and we're not going to allow it to happen anymore. I'm not going to allow it. So Michael, do a good job. One of the first things we'll do when we get into the White House is to stop the invasion that's taking place on our southern border. Thank you,
Stop the invasion. It's an invasion. We're being invaded. We're being invaded by people that come from all over the world. They come from prisons. They come from, you know, there's a difference between a prison and a jail. Not a big difference. It's not, neither one's great, but we have them all. We get the prisons. We get the jails. We have insane asylums. My people say, please don't use that term. That's Silence of the Lambs. Have anybody seen it? A great actor. He was great. But it's Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal Lecter. We got that. But we also have mental institutions. That's where a lot of people, there are mental institutions all over the country, all over the countries in South America, but all over the world are being emptied out. And who can blame them? And the people are being brought, they call them deposited. Where are you going to deposit? It's a terrible term to use, but they call them deposited into the United States. Congratulations. Congratulations. So they're coming from mental institutions and prisons and they're terrorists at a level that we've never seen before coming in. At a level, you know, they said in 2019, they found no, think of, hold your, none. That was us. None. Now this last week, they reported numbers that we've never seen before. Terrorists. And they're coming in. And we built the wall. We built 500 plus miles of wall. And then we, which is more than what we said. And then we were going to add another 200. We bought the material. We bought the walls. All we had to do is, all we had to do is put them up, and we had that tragic result, which has destroyed our country. It shows what happens. I mean, think of it. All of these things that are happening wouldn't have happened. Ukraine wouldn't have happened. The attack on Israel wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. Nothing like this would have happened. So uh, we're going we're gonna to change things around, and we're going to have to do it fast. Or, or we're not going to have... Or we're not going to have a country left. Very simple. We're not going to have a country left. Just recently, Customs and Border Patrol distributed a warning that Hamas, has anyone ever heard of Hamas? Not nice. Not nice. And Hezbollah and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad could try to infiltrate terrorists across the border and into our country. Thank you very much. You know, the same people that attacked Israel are coming into our country, too. And did you ever notice, somebody said the other day, some fool on CNN said, oh, isn't that nice? They're all nice young men. They have young men, 23, 24, 22 years old, strong. They like nice young men. There's something going on. There's something going on. It's not a good thing. They have a lot of young men, young, strong men. I don't want to insult the women, but they're young, strong men, even though, as you know, they want... Men to play in women's sports, you know that? We're not going to allow that. We're not allowing that. We're not allowing that. So, yeah, the, one of their favorite things we want, who would want that? Think of it. Open borders, pay high taxes, pay high interest rates. You can't buy a home, bad education, woke military. There's not a policy they have. No voter ID, rigged elections. Who would want this? And then they come up with, Men should have the ability to play in women's sports. I want to do that, too. I'm an extraordinary athlete. I want to play. You know, I'm not a big fan of LeBron James, but I, I would go to him and I'd say, uh, LeBron, have you ever thought of playing women's basketball? Because I would be the greatest coach in history, I believe. I'd get LeBron to transition. And I'd get... I get three or four other people to transition, and I would be better than John Wooden. I would be the greatest basketball coach in history. We would go through. We would be, we would be undefeated for years. They wouldn't even get old, the players. They could be 70, 75. Just keep playing. Don't worry about it. Undefeated. They'd be undefeated for 42 years before they retire. One day, I'll terminate every single one. Day one, we're going to terminate every single open borders policy of the Biden administration. And we will begin the single largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have to. We have to. Not that I want to do that. You know, Dwight Eisenhower, he was a great general, actually, underrated. He's a great general. 
When he was president, he de deported. He was very much into it. He said, you have to come in legally. That's the same with me. Have to come into the country legally, right? Legally. And he uh, did tremendous deportation and, you know, works. But we have... We have, we have all of these people coming in, and we do have many, many criminals and people that shouldn't be in our country, including disease, by the way. People coming in that are very, very sick, and uh, they, uh, they do pain. It's just not right what's happening. Who would think that this is a good thing? Who would think this is a good thing? It's so sad. And we're going we're gonna to take, and I think that's why we're leading Biden by 10 points, 12 points, 14 points. But what they do is they say, you know, he's killing us. Let's indict him. What do we do? Oh, he complained about the election. Let's indict him because he complained about the election, which was rigged, by the way. See, most guys would say, oh, I don't want to say it was rigged because it was so rigged. But what happens is they indict me because I complain about the election. Well, so does about 80 percent of the country complain because it was a rigged election. It was a rigged election. And then you have the weak people, some weak people. Oh, they fought. And then all of a sudden, and you know, who the hell can blame them? They've been, these animals have been going after them for three years. They said, oh, well, let me say, let me make up a story about Trump. I'll do anything. Just leave me alone. They get, you know what? Honestly, I don't blame them that much. They get tired. But we don't get tired. We got to straighten out our country. We got to straighten out our borders and our elections, and we're going to do it fast. So we have not one, but two immigration disasters. You know that we have the border, and we also have the Biden State Department, which is flooding our country with jihadists and Hamas. They're flooding. They're flooding into our country. They're sympathizers. That's why you see these big rallies all over the place. They came in. Over a very short period of time, a lot of them came in through Obama, too. Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of Barack? Remember, remember Rush? Remember Rush Limbaugh? The great Rush Limbaugh? He'd go, Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. He was a great piece of work. We miss him. But you see now how important it was to have the Trump travel ban. Remember the Trump travel ban? And for four years, you had no problems, did you? You had none. Now you have problems. Yeah, you have problems. Think of it, World Trade Center, so many things before. During our four years, we had no problems. And I could never talk about it during the four years because I didn't want something to happen the next day. So I wouldn't want to say. But after I left, I talk about it all the time. We had a travel ban that was very restrictive to certain countries where they want to send people that hate us into our country. So if you don't mind, we'll have it again, okay? Is that okay? And we, we won it through the Supreme Court, you know? We had a win. We had to go all the way up to the Supreme Court. We won. We instituted the travel ban, and it was amazing. Again, you come into the country, but you come in legally. But everybody that – every time I see on television I have people wearing the hat, it said, Trump was right about everything. I don't want to brag, but I think I've been right about, like, everything. I think I've been right about everything. And, and when we return to the White House, we, not me, we're going to return, all of us together. We're going to return. And that's why I love that you're working on caucus with us. We'll terminate the visas of all of Hamas sympathizers, and we'll get them off our college campuses, out of our cities. And get them the hell out of our country, if that's okay with you. Because if you don't love America, we really don't want you, and we're not going to let you come to America. Under the Trump administration, the world was safe because America was strong. America was respected. And whether, I guess I shouldn't be saying, but your president was very respected. They all respected your president. They respected us. China respected us. Russia respected us. You know, you didn't see Russia going into Ukraine with me. They would have never done it. You didn't see China talking about Taiwan with me. North Korea, we got along. All of a sudden, all that nuclear talk stopped, which is starting right now. You could end up, you could very well end up in World War III, I hate to tell you. But the horrific attacks in Israel never 
would have happened, just wouldn't have happened to even think. When you turn on television today, you pick up the papers, you look at the news, so many different sources today, thank goodness, because the old stuff was so fake, it got so crazy. Fake, look at them back there, look at those cameras. Oh, now the cameras turn off. You know, every time I start talking, those red lights, see those red lights, they get a little darker, darker, doom. Every time I mention fake news, CNN just goes right off. Sure. But a vote for Joe Biden, Crooked Joe. You know, we changed his name. We had Sleepy Joe. They're both good. Let me ask you, what's a better name? Sleepy Joe, Sleepy Joe Biden, or Crooked Joe Biden? They're both very accurate. They're both accurate. Which is better? Okay, let's have a vote. Which is better? Ready? We'll go Crooked first, and we'll go. Which is better? Crooked Joe Biden. Or Sleepy Joe Biden. All right, crooked. So, you know, having a big vocabulary, I said you can't use the same, you can't use the same word for two people. So one of the best days a couple of months ago in the life of Hillary Clinton, we relieved her of the word crooked Hillary, right? And now we call her beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. We call her beautiful Hillary. And we brought the term crooked to Joe because he's crooked as hell. There's never been anybody so crooked, so corrupt, and so incompetent. It's no wonder the far-left lunatics are trying to stop our movement. They want to stop it so badly, weaponizing government for election interference. You ever hear of election interference? They say Trump actually challenged the election. He said the election was not honest. Yes, he's got proof, but we don't want to look at the proof. Got a lot of proof. Got a lot of proof. We think we should indict him for that. By the way, practically every Democrat in Congress fought us on 2016, right? And did you ever hear Maxine Waters talking about things? You ever see? But she's okay to do it, but Trump, he can't, uh, he can't do that. Now, what they're doing in our country, what they've done... They've made us into a banana republic. They've made us into a third world country. And we are not going to take it much longer. So we're crushing Biden by six points, eight points, nine points, 11 points, 12 points, and 14 points. And by the way, all of our other uh, candidates, our Republicans, are losing to Biden, which is hard to believe, actually. But, but they are. Uh, Ron DeSanctimonious is losing big to Biden. Bird Brent, do you, does anybody know who Bird Brent is? Oh, correct. Nikki, Nikki Haley. I will never run against this president. He's the finest president we've had in 100 years. I will not run against President Trump. I will not. I will never do it. Two months later, I've decided to run. Bird Brain. No, her name is Bird Brain. But we're beating Biden by a lot. The other candidates are not. The uh, great Hispanic American community in 2020, we did better than any Republican president in over 50 years. And now, and now we're up by 32% above those numbers. Hispanic Americans, thank you. We, we just had a poll come out. African Americans, we are up to 28%. That's never happened. Nobody's ever had that. But, you know, they look at what's happening in this country, and they're really, I mean, they're not doing well. They're not being treated. And they are, they are right now at a level, I think we're going to get, so we're at 28. You know, you need 4% to win. You have to get 4. We're 28. Nobody ever thought that was possible. We love you very much. Thank you. Keep going, because we're going to win. We're going to win for everybody. But they've been saying, and a lot of people are saying it, this isn't a campaign, this is a movement. And I really believe it is. This is a movement. In the history of our country, they've never had anything like it. And I think it's now greater, far greater. You know, we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. These, these lunatics hate when I say that. But we got millions and millions more votes in 2020. So we did much better. 
But we right now have more spirit. There's, I, in driving over here, every time you see a building, a house, you got the Trump sign all over the place, like that one. It's amazing, actually. There's more spirit now than we've ever had, than I've ever seen. And we've had tremendous, uh, 2016 was incredible. And I tell this to people, 2016, I used to say, was the most important election in the history of our country. But you know what? 2024 blows it away because we're not going to have a country. We're not going to have a country left. But together we passed, all of us together, passed the largest tax cuts and regulation cuts in American history. We achieved energy independence and we're going to be energy down. Think of that, what that means. And today we're getting our energy from Venezuela. We're buying Venezuelan tar. You know what they have? They have tar. They don't have very good stuff. They have tar. And you know where, for the environmentalists in the Democrat Party, you know where they refine it? Houston. So they bring tar into Houston and it goes right up into the atmosphere instead of that beautiful stuff that's under our feet. We have more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than Russia. We have more than both of them combined, we think. I approved Anwar in Alaska. That's the size and maybe bigger than Saudi Arabia. The first day of the new administration, they terminated it. Ronald Reagan wanted it. He couldn't get it. Everybody wanted it. I got it. I got it. And they terminated it. And then I terminated the pipeline, right, in Russia. Russia pipeline going to Germany, going all over Europe. I terminated it, and Biden comes in his first week. He approved it. It was dead. I had it dead. Trump was right about everything. <laughs> Stand up, sir. Let me see. Look at that guy. I like, I like that man. Yeah. Now, think of it. Nord Stream 2. Do you ever hear of Nord Stream? Nobody ever heard of it until I came along. They're building this massive pipeline going to Germany and other parts. And I said, what the hell is this? So we're spending money to defend Germany and all of Europe. NATO, we're spending disproportionately, although now I got NATO. They're spending a lot of money now. They said, will you not protect us if we don't pay? Because they weren't paying. I said, that's right. I won't protect. The money came in. We never saw anything like it. The head of NATO, the secretary general said he's never seen. He's been there for years. I've never seen money pour in like that. They asked me that question. Sir, does that mean that if we don't pay, you won't protect us from Russia? He said, that's exactly what it means. That's exactly. Where's Wayne? Is that Wayne? Where is Wayne, Alan Root? Where the hell is he? You know, because this, kind of, this is the kind of thing he likes. This is what he talks about. He's made a hell of a living talking about this kind of. Where's Wayne? Where? Come on, Wayne. I can't. What, you couldn't get a better location? Where the hell is he? He's a great guy, I'll tell you. There he is. Hello, Wayne. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, you know, I was checking to see if he would have checked out. I would have never done a show again, I tell you. No, Wayne's done great. No, but this is the kind of thing he talks about because he's about common sense. You know, we're conservative, right? But we're really not conservative. We're people of common sense. We need a wall. We want good education. We want low interest rates. We want a strong military. You know, we don't need to be conservative. We need to have common sense and be intelligent people. But we became the world's largest producer of oil and gas and helped save. Think of this. We had $2,500 a year just in energy we were saving every year. And now energy is at the highest it's ever been. And I'd like to congratulate the people of California. Yours are pretty bad, too, because they just hit $8 for a gallon of beautiful, beautiful gasoline today, $8. The governor's doing a great job out there. Boy, does he want to run. He wants to run so badly. We created more than 1.2 million more, think of it, more manufacturing and construction jobs. It's the biggest increase in a year ever in our country. Remember they said, you don't do manufacturing anymore. You can't have manufacturing jobs, it won't happen. We ended uh, the individual mandate penalty on Obamacare, which was a big deal. You know, they take credit for it. They take credit for a lot of the things we got done. All of the medical savings that we got come due in his term, and he stands there. He doesn't even know what the hell. He can't, he can't get off a stage. Today, he couldn't find the door again. He can't put two sentences together, and he's in charge of nuclear warfare. Oh, my. 
No, but three days ago, he got off the thing, and, you know, I see a stairway there, I see a stairway there. If I had to, I'd jump right off this front of the thing. We could make it. It's about four feet. I think I could make it. I mean, it's better than looking around, driving in circles. I'd, I'd rather do that than do that. You just jump off and you pretend it was like just normal. Because did you ever see him, though? He fin finishes. And by that time, all the stuff is worn off. So he's totally incoherent. And he goes, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, honestly, we shouldn't be laughing. We should be crying. You want to know the thing. Because they're destroying our country, these incompetent fools. They're destroying. And thank God for Secret Service, because they grab them and they point them to the exit. And half the time they have to. And he's taking some serious falls. You know, at some point, if I fell, I, I, can you imagine if I fell what they would do, the fake news? This guy took a fall at Annapolis like I've never seen before. That wasn't a fall. That was called a serious fall. I think his fall up the stairs, not that. Up the stairs, you shouldn't fall. Down the stairs is a possibility. And now they don't use those stairs anymore. It's so elegant. You know, you come out of Air Force One and the flags from countries are waving. He comes out of the children's stairs. They're meant for two things. Really, really bad weather. I mean, like, I mean, horrific. And children, because, you know, they're safer. The other one, you weigh the hell up there, you say, I better not fall. And you can go down slowly. You can go down nice and slowly. Anything is better than falling, right? So you can go down slowly, take your time, relax. The guy cannot make it down the stairs. So now they put him out of the children's stairs. And, and you know, they have people waiting for him. All the people waited. Not too many people are waiting for him, actually. But they did wait for me. And you see him come out of this little stair on the side of the plane. You say, geez, what? There's not a lot of pomp. There's not a lot of pomp and ceremony there, is there, huh? Here comes uh, Crooked Joe. It's terrible. And you know, honestly, the way I talk about him now, I talk very disparagingly. But I didn't used to do this. You know that. I used to talk. I mean, I'd hit him. And, you know, I'd hit a lot of people. I hit people. Sort of what I do for a living, right? But no, but I would hit him with respect. Today, I call him a fool. I call him grossly incompetent. I, because they did something that's never been done. He indicted the leading candidate of the Republican Party. He indicted the candidate of the Republican Party, who's beating him by many points in the polls in the election. He indicted the Republican Party's candidate. And the problem you have is every other candidate is getting killed against him or the Democrat. We're leading him by a lot. So he indicted me for no reason whatsoever, including the local ones. I got four indictments and some court cases, all because of politics. Now think of this. Did anybody ever hear of Al Capone? Scarface. This was not a nice person. Al Capone, if you went out to dinner, if he didn't like you, he'd kill you, okay? I didn't like the way he smiled. Take him out. Take that uh, out. I don't want to use the bad language. If I do, I, you know, I get myself in a lot of trouble. You know who gets angry at me when I do that? The first lady. Darling, you don't have to use a bad word. You don't have to use a bad word. But I get myself into a lot of trouble, too. If I say even the word hell, hell, if I say hell, I get, they say, oh, he used a terrible word. I remember with that. Chris Christie, a guy shouts out, he's a fat pig. Now he shouted out, Chris Christie is a fat pig. 
Then they shouted out, Bill Barr is a fat pig. He's a slob. He's a fat pig. You're not allowed to use the word fat. You're not allowed to say that. So they say, Bill Barr, sir, he's a fat pig. And I say, listen, Bill Barr is not a fat pig. Chris Christie is not a fat pig, sir. I defend them. And the press goes crazy because they say, how can we criticize him? He's actually defending. But I said that because I just heard somebody call somebody a fat pig. No, we're not allowed to call those guys fat pigs. You can't use the word fat anymore. You can't use almost anything anymore. Almost any word that you use today, if you say to a woman backstage, a woman came up, the wife of one of our people, and she looked very beautiful. I said, I'm not allowed to say this. And this could be the end of my political career. But you're really beautiful. Beautiful woman. You have a beautiful wife. And you know what she said? Thank you, sir. You can say it as much as you want. Always get that. But in theory, that's the end of your political career. You can't, you can't say anything nowadays. We'll change it. We'll change it. We're going to change it. But all the things we did, fully rebuilt the U.S. military, created Space Force, defeated ISIS, a lot of stuff we did right here. We did... A lot, of the, a lot of the building we did right here of weapons. And I was the first president in decades who didn't start a war, but I finished wars. I beat the hell out of ISIS. We saved America twice before, really, but we saved America once before. But we really saved it twice because that second was a disaster. The, the, gift, the gift from China, right? The China virus came in. It came in hard. And nobody had any idea what the hell it was, but it wasn't good. It was a terrible thing. And uh, they'll be doing something for us in the future that will... Nothing can make up for all the people worldwide. Millions and millions and millions of people died. But they'll be doing something for us someday. You'll see that. Just like I got 28... Think of it. I got $28 billion from China for our farmers. You know that, right? $28 billion. Who the hell else is going to get $28 billion dollars from China. So I went to uh, Iowa the other day, and we're leading by a lot. But I said, my staff said, please don't talk this way. It's very insulting. You're taking Iowa for granted. You're saying they will definitely vote. I said, listen, and I told this to the people of Iowa, the audience, we had a big crowd, tremendous crowd, great people. I said, I do. I take it for granted because I got you $28 billion. Who the hell else? These farmers and people, they're opening up checks for 100,000, 78,000. They're showing me checks. And it all came from China. Do you think Joe Biden's going to get China to pay? Joe, Joe Biden wants the money for himself. He takes it for himself because he's a crook. But until he, until he indicted me, I never talked this way. But now I say gloves are off. You know, he started a precedent. You know, it was always, it was always when you, look, hey, it cost me billions of dollars to become president, billions. You know, Pelosi started with no money and now she's worth a hundred million, right? All these, no, look at Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary started with no money and they got, you know, a couple of hundred. I started with billions and now I have fewer billions. That's okay. Somebody said, would you do it again? Absolutely, because we made America great again. Then it got taken, but I would do it again. I told my kids, don't do deals when they come to you from foreign countries. And they did. They came from the richest countries. And we'd love to do a deal with you. We could have done anything. And, you know, I'm maybe from the old school. Being president of the United States is a big deal. And I said, I don't give. I've been doing deals all my life. I became very rich. You see that in this stupid court case that I have in New York with, I mean, the numbers are much higher than on the statements. Everyone's saying, holy, this guy really bad. I did great. And you know what? I did, but I'm a private company. Nobody knows until now they look at these numbers, and these numbers are much more rather than much less. I have this horrible, horrible racist attorney general in New York. We have a judge that's a Trump hater. We had a guy there, star witness. Did you see? It was like Perry Mason. Did you see? Yes, I lied, he goes. I, I lied. I lied. He's practically crying. I lied. I said, that's the end of the case, right? The judge says, no, it's not. The judge is going crazy. But this is what I have to put up with. I could have a nice, easy life. I wouldn't be here with you right now. I might be at the top of my beautiful hotel down the road, right? I'd rather be with you, to be honest. 
I'd rather be with But in life, you have to do what you have to do. Like, for instance, you have to improvise. I'm improvising tonight. I got this stuff. This, this is the darkest looking valley I've ever seen right here. You cannot even see there's a folder down there. So you improvise. You put it up here and you pretend that there's nothing happening. And then you don't read it anyway, because when you read this stuff, it's no good. Okay? So you do 99% of it without it. But you take a look at uh, the Oval Office. We obliterated, and we will. We're going back. We're going to obliterate the deep state. We did a big, we did big damage to it with Comey and all of the crap that we had to do. We're going to end the weaponization of our government against Christians. What's happening? What's happening with Catholics? The FBI, the FBI is after Catholics. What is that all about? They don't go after people that want to destroy our country. They don't go after people that cheat on elections, but they go after parents on school boards that want to have their children be taken care of properly and educated properly. But they're going after Christians, but they're going after Catholics. Does, do we have a Catholic in the room? Does anybody know why they're going after you, sir? Because you are in serious danger within the FBI. Don't say it. You know what? They'll search you out tonight and they'll take you out in handcuffs. I, they'll say, who was that guy? Where does he live? Down the road. They'll find you. Don't, don't stand up, sir. I, will, I promise to protect you. But unlike Ron De Sanctimonious, you know why I call him De Sanctimonious, right? This guy was going nowhere. He was at like 3%. He was a failed candidate in Florida. I was very popular in Florida, won the race by a lot. He came to see me, he said, would you endorse me? Tears in his eyes, would you endorse me? He was done. He was cooked, he was fried, he was over. And he was a lousy candidate. The thing is, the only thing he did well, he did one thing well, he got my endorsement, that was about it. But he was a dead candidate, running against a guy named Adam Putnam, who was the Secretary of Agriculture, a big thing in Florida. And Adam Putnam was up by like 30 points, 40 points. He had $28 million. Ron had $2 in the account. So he comes to see me. He, his campaign was a failure because he had no personality. Look, you can have all the endorsements, but you still have to have a little personality when you're going to run for office. It helps. You know, Winston Churchill had a little personality. You have to be able to publicly speak. You have to be able to do certain things. And he didn't do well. And I said, look, Ron, I think I will because I saw him a couple of times on television with impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and he was one of about 150 congressmen. He wasn't the best at all. Jim Jordan was great. We had others that were great. By the way, Mike Johnson's going to be a great speaker. He's going to be a great. You watch. He's going to be a great speaker. That yeah, was a great thing. That I mean, it was amazing. But these guys were great. But he did a little bit, so I said, all right, because I didn't know Putnam, I never met him. I didn't know who he was. I heard about him. But he had a lot of money, and he was way up in the polls. The election was over. He was already measuring the carpets in Tallahassee. You know, Tallahassee is where they have the mansion, right? That's where they're based. And he was measuring those carpets. He wanted the nicest carpet you've ever seen. And I said, all right, I'll give it a shot. But I actually said, if Abe Lincoln and George Washington came back from the dead run, you're so dead they couldn't help you at all. But I'll give it a shot. What the hell? We can lose every once in a while, right? We can lose one. And I'll do that because you uh, gave me a minor defense during the impeachment hoaxes. And he said, thank you very much. I endorsed him. The next day, he was like a rocket. He was like a missile. Ping! And he ends up winning the damn thing a short time later. And then he comes to me and he goes, I'm going to lose the election to a crackhead. Now, we didn't know he was a crackhead then. Do you remember? He was a handsome guy. Everybody thought he was going to be a president. Within the next 15 years, he was going to be a president of the United States. And I said, no, you can beat him. We'll do a couple of rallies. And we did two or three rallies. We had massive crowds. I said, Ron, you're going to win. He said, I don't think so. And I said, I said, Ron, I'm telling you, I have a good feel for this stuff. And I'm telling you, you're going to win. And he won. And the other guy did turn out. Then a year later, <laughs> he found out his would not have been I'm not a big fan of Ron, but this other guy would have not been good. He was, in fact, a crackhead, and beyond that. 
And so what happened, so what happened is Iran wins, and that's it. I said, Ron, good luck, enjoy Florida, you know, do good. You know, here's a little advantage, it's called the ocean and the sun. Yes, perfect weather and got the ocean. And uh, we've had a lot of great governors in Florida. Florida can make you a great governor. So what happened is he wins. And then four years later, they scream out to him, Governor, are you going to run against the president? And you know what he said, right? I have no comment. He said, I have no comment. I said, well, I said, first lady, did he say no comment? Yes, that's what he said. I said, that means he's running. <laughs> to me, that means he's running. That means we start attacking immediately. And my people backstage, I said, sir, you shouldn't attack him. Why, he's a Republican. I said, I don't give a damn. I'm going to... And I hit him. I hit him. And I found out that he voted against Social Security. That's not a good thing. He wanted to raise the age of Social Security up to 70. And he wanted to decimate Medicare, little things like that. And he would not, uh, I tell you, he's dropped like a falling bird, badly injured, badly injured from the sky, just He's gone down, and I don't even know if he's in second place anymore. I think, I think somebody said that. Somebody said that Bird Brain is now in second place, but she's going nowhere because she doesn't have what it takes. I know, I know all these people well. Someday I'll tell you people that do have what it takes because there are some that do, not necessarily in that group. But we have a lot of everybody that leaves seems to be endorsing me. You know, people are leaving now, and they're all endorsing me. I don't know about Mike Pence. He should endorse me. He should endorse me. You know why? Because, because I had a great, successful presidency, and he was the vice president. He should endorse me. Uh, I chose him, made him vice president. But people, people in politics can be very disloyal. I've never seen anything like it. You know, they asked me a question. They asked me a <laughs> traitor. He goes, but he could have done what he could have done, right? There's no question. But people in politics, they ask me questions, who's worse, business people or politicians? I said, absolutely business. This is the first month. Absolutely business people are worse, worse, worse. Then about four or five months go by and we start, you know, they start doing their number with the impeachment hoaxes and Ukraine, 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 Russia, 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 making up the fake dossier by Hillary, right? She hires some guy that admitted, I'm sorry, it was fake. How about going home to my wife on the shower, you know, the golden shower, they called it. And I had to explain that to our great first lady. I had to explain. They said, sir, they said, when you were in Russia. Well, I was with us. I was there for so short a period. And they said this thing with the golden shower. And I said, I didn't care about the other stuff. The other stuff was, you know, nuclear. This, I didn't worry about that. The golden shower was a problem for me. And I said to our great first lady, Golden, she said, nope, that one you didn't do. See, I'm a germaphobe. She said, that one you didn't do. So she knew immediately I had no problem there. I said, whew, that was a close one. That wasn't good. But Ron DeSanctimonious is failing. They're all failing. And we're going up. So the polls come out just now, 63 to 9. Would you say that's good? 63. And we ha have other like polls, so we have, uh, it's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing. And uh, for those of you, and I don't think you have too much of it here, but uh, in Iowa, it's a big deal. Uh, Ron DeSanctimonious wanted to kill ethanol. Now, all of a sudden, he's a big fan of ethanol. You know, for six years, he wanted to kill ethanol. Now, all of a sudden, he was a fan of ethanol, but the people of Iowa get it. The people of Wisconsin and Nebraska get it. The people of South Carolina, where we're leading by a lot. You know, we have Bird Brain, and we have a good man, Tim Scott. He's a senator and the governor. So we have a senator, we have a governor, and I'm leading by 52 points. That's good. That's good. And under a Trump administration, gasoline-powered engines will be allowed, but child sexual mutilation will not be allowed, if that's okay. What? And I will ban critical race theory and far left gender ideology from our schools and from our military. And we will defend, can you imagine you even have to say this? We will defend parents' rights. 
Think of it. Can you imagine, like 10 or 15 years ago, you're a politician. Can you believe I'm a politician? I never thought I'd say it, but I'm a politician, I guess. But look, 15 years ago, I get up, I say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to defend parental rights. Who the hell wouldn't defend parental rights? Think of it. We'll stand up to communist China. We will secure our elections. We will fully protect our Second Amendment. Oh, I did a good job. We will bring back free speech in America, and we will defend the Judeo-Christian values of our nation's founding. Right? Remember, look at what we did for Israel with Jerusalem and with the embassy, capital of Israel. Every other president, Wayne, every other president said they were going to do it. They all chickened out. And you know why? I never realized it until I got there. I said, why do they not do it? They Clinton, they'd all campaign on it, and then they wouldn't do it. And when I got to the White House, I realized, because when they heard we were thinking about it and going to do it, we got calls from the biggest people, kings, queens, dictators, presidents, and prime ministers, not too many people else. And they're calling to tell me, please don't do it. I said, what do they want? They want to talk to you about don't doing that. Don't do it. Please don't do it. And so I said to them, I don't want to tell them I'm going to do it. Why should I do that? So they called me like on a Tuesday, a king. Please don't do it, he was going to say. So I said, tell him I'm going to call him back on Friday. On Wednesday, I had a press conference announcing that I'm doing it. Then I called him back. King, what's up? What's happening? What's happening? I said, well, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the capital of Israel. Please don't do it. I was going to ask you, but it's too late. You've already. Oh, you should have called me soon. I wish I called you. Back. So much better. They're getting into an argument. Do you agree, everybody over here? Agrees. So, no, I did something that, that nobody else would do. With France, I mean, I'll just give you this. Macron, good guy, but he's for France. We're for, we're America first, right? He's for France. And I heard that he was going to put a big tax on American companies going and doing business in France. I said, that's not nice. So I told my secretary of the treasury to call them and to talk to them and to tell them not to do it. And they called and they talked and nothing happened. And they were still going to do it. And they came back to me a week later and they said, no, he's going to do it. I said, no, he's not. I said, you got one more day. Give it a shot. They called back. They said, we can't stop it. It's already pretty much done. So I called up Macron and I said, Emmanuel, his name is Emmanuel. I said, Emmanuel. I understand you're taxing all American companies. Oh, yes, yes, we are passing legislation in the next 48 hours. I said, no, you're not. He said, no, no, I am. Oh, I said, no, you're not, no. He said, why do you say that? I said, because if you do, I am going to put a tax on all wine and champagne coming into the United States from France of 100%. And if you do it, we're going to put that tax on and... No, 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 you can't do that. I said, nope, I have the legislation right here. I will sign it. You call me back within 15 minutes. He called me back in five minutes. He said, we would be delighted not to put a tax on you. That was the end. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. You think, you think crooked Joe Biden does that? You think, he, you think he does that kind of stuff? I don't think so. He wants to go to sleep. Remember, he was with all those foreign leaders, and he said, I want to go to sleep now. So we have to defeat crooked Joe Biden, the worst, most crooked president in the history of our country. And it begins with getting your friends and your neighbors, your family, everybody. You have to get them to the caucuses. It's a big deal. Michael is going to do a fantastic job. But you're, you become a caucus state. So if you have a pencil or paper or a, any form of machine, they make so many machines, they're obsolete about three days after they make them. You know, they make a new machine. This is the greatest thing ever. You go to buy it. They say, I'm sorry, sir. We don't sell it. It's obsolete. You know, the only thing that doesn't get obsolete, two things. What are they? Walls and wheels. Remember, they said, walls don't work. I said, no, walls work. Even the Vatican attacked me. Do you remember? They said, we don't. And then I said, well, take a look at the Vatican. They have a, the biggest wall I've ever seen. around. <laughs> we don't want a wall. But, you know, that sort of worked out okay. So text the following, Nevada to 88022, or sign up to nv.donaldjtrump, did you ever hear from, dot com? 
to get involved and to help ensure a victory unlike anything. I believe, I really do, I believe that this is the most important election in our country's history. I believe that our country has never been in a worse position. I think we have a very good chance of going into World War III because we have incompetent leaders. I will promise you, you'll never have World War III. You're never going to have World War III. But we have incompetent people dealing with very smart people. You know, they hate it when I say, President Xi is very smart. He runs China, 1.4 billion people. If I say he's smart, the president, he said President Xi is smart. Okay. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? But we have very, very, in many cases, evil people. In many cases, just people that want to do right for their country or they think they want to do right. But we have a leader that doesn't have a clue. We have a leader that can't compete with these people. We have a leader that can't be our leader. And I tell you something, can't be much longer. One year is a very long time. They can do tremendous damage to our elections. They can do tremendous damage to our country in one year. And we're not going to let it happen because we have a leader that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And we're dealing on the most, most com well, it's complicated. It's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. We are not going to be taken advantage of by foreign countries. We are going to bring our jobs back. We're going to bring our dignity back. Because right now, the whole world is laughing at the United States of America because we have a fool for president. And we are going to change that in 2024. It's the most important election of our history. And we're going to turn it around fast. We're going to turn it around. We're going to get the interest rates down. We're going to get the gasoline and the gas and the oil. We're going to get it way, way down. And we're not going to get it from Venezuela. We're going to get it from ourselves right under our feet. We're going to make a lot of money and you're going to get, you can all be rich again. You're going to be able to go out and buy. Nobody's buying houses anymore because interest rates, number one, you can't get the money. And number two, if you could, the interest rates are so high, you don't want it. So we're going to change it all. We're going to change it fast. Be there. We got to win the caucus big, big. And then we got to go on most importantly, because we're going to do great with our caucus. But we have to win in November. We have to win. We have to get rid of this corrupt regime of people that don't know what they're doing. We love you. Thank you very much. Sign up. Thank you. We will see you soon. We'll be back a lot. Thank you very much, everybody.